Over the last few years, the number of teenagers reading for fun has dropped significantly. A study taken during 2014 by Common Sense Media found out that not only do reading rates decline as kids get older, but they've also dropped off significantly in the past 30 years, with only 45% of 17-year-olds admitting they read by choice once or twice a year. But why is this? It may seem funny to think that teenagers are reading less when popular books that feature on the New York Times bestsellers list been turned into popular movie franchises, earning millions of pounds. But this decline in reading could be due to a multitude of reasons. From this chart, we can gather that young adults between the ages of 16 and 24 spend their free time with friends and family, listening to music, watching TV, spending time on the internet, or shopping. To find out more information on this subject, I spoke to Catherine Gray, who set up a book club at the college, Charlotte Beadle, who has her own booktube channel, Mark Sainz, owner of Bride Bookshop, Gail Middleton, owner of Mrs. Middleton's shop and the rabbit hole, and Reuben Simpson Little, the owner of Babushka Books, who'd plan to appear on camera. As young children, we are encouraged to read by our parents and teachers. It's one of the important milestones of growing up. However, once we enter our teenage years, it is often dismissed as boring or a time waster. So why are teenagers reading less? Teens read less because everything's available on the internet, it's all on demand. Um, you know, books are made into films, so they're more accessible in that way. So people think, well, why do I need to pick up a book? It's already there, visual way. I can just, you know, watch it on a screen rather than read it. Sort of stereotypes can be seen as bookish or nerdy or a geek. People don't want to be seen that way. You know, in years gone by, there might have been the television, which was a fairly limited sort of range of programmes for younger people versus today where it's all on demand, you can see anything at any time with a click of a button, it's far easier. I think technology is probably the biggest reason why kids don't read today. And also just because of Netflix, so much stuff that's easier to do than reading that involves less effort. I think there's, there's so much more now for kids to do than there ever used to be. I also think parents don't read as much so they don't encourage the reading as they would have done a few generations back. So I think it's, it's, it's a cycle which people these days just don't read enough and I don't think they'll, they'll understand that until they get older unfortunately. Many seem to believe that technology has affected our reading habits the most. I think the internet is the first reason that they're reading less because, I mean I do it myself, you, can, you go on to the internet, you go on to Facebook, you go on to Facebook, it's all short attention span stuff. So we've got you so used to having quick things fed to us. So, for instance, you get an article on Facebook or something like that, you read a bit of it, you get bored if it's too long, and you go on to something else. And I think that's trained us to read small snippets of things. Although, I do find having a bookshop that you get a lot of young people coming in for books that want books. I think as long as you've got the two and you are stopping and reading, then you've got a good balance. I think it can have a negative effect in that there's not so much time to read. Before there was the internet, there wasn't so much of a distraction from the time. But it can be helpful because they can um, look on the internet and they might see a book that they might be interested in. They may be able to order it off the internet. So there's a certain amount of positiveness, but I think it's probably mostly negative because it means there's not so much time, there's more time occupied on the internet. The internet is often considered the guilty party as it seems teenagers today are more interested in the content found on their phone. Over the last 10 years, the number of hours teenagers spend online has doubled, with often releasing information that 16 to 24 year olds have had the biggest increase in internet use, almost tripling from 10 hours and 24 minutes each week in 2005 to 27 hours and 36 minutes by the end of 2014. This is mainly due to new technology such as smartphones and tablets. One person who's been able to use the internet to their advantage is Charlotte Beadle, who in her spare time creates videos for her booktube channel on YouTube, Beadle Books. Hey there booktube, it's Charlotte and welcome back to Beadle Books. I decided to start a booktube channel just because, mostly for like distraction, because I have anxieties. I needed something to keep my brain occupied and I love books and I used to do it 
and everyone on booktube is really nice and kind so you can just chat to people and waste time talking about books i like reading for escapism like going somewhere else you can it sounds lame but you kind of get to know the characters which is really cool and um it's just a nice thing to do if you need to get away from everything for a bit although the internet can be a distraction it does allow charlotte a platform to express her love of reading reading is often considered an individual activity However, for Charlotte, it allows her a method of creating new friends and sharing her passion for books, others who share the same interest. Reading can provide many other benefits as well. Mark Zanes is the owner of one of the most popular local bookshops on the island. Mum and Dad, they used to buy books at jumble sales and first they'd sell them in the book and magazine collector and then they'd go to book fairs and sell them and I helped them with that. Then the shop came up and we sold our houses and we went on from there really. We, we established from 1988, so we've been here nearly 30 years now. I think you can go into greater depth with a book rather than looking on the internet because looking at a website, it just, you look at the main subject and it doesn't go into such greater depth. I always like to have something to do, something to occupy me. I could never just sit doing nothing and you might spend some time watching television or listening to music but you are, you want to read as well because it's a it's a way of occupying the mind like mark sames reuben simpson little also owns a popular local bookshop on the island i've had the shop for about eight years it'd been a bookshop already before i before i took over an old gentleman had it and from what i've worked out it was set up in the 50s on the island by a, um, a gentleman called Aldous pembroke I believe he moved the store to London and then returned to the island and he died in 1981, I've been told. And then I stumbled across it and um, took over in 2008. I think, especially in today's age, reading will teach someone to have patience. These days, a lot of kids want everything now and with computer games and things like that, everything is done within you know two or three minutes, you know? So getting kids to concentrate on anything for a period of time where it just be 10 minutes or half an hour, I think, I think is incredibly important. Obviously you're reading to learn things as well, but just to, just to read you know, some a classic work of fiction or something modern, you're learning the language as well. You know, even as an adult, you can you'll learn the language through reading. Situated in Freshwater are two lovely local bookshops, both owned by Gail Milton. I came down from London six years ago and I had a fashion uh, shop, clothes shop in London. And I'd been coming down here to the island previously at weekends. And I loved a little bookshop in Yama and got to know the chap in there. And I was always said to him, I think I might want one day to swap fashion for books. But I was kidding, but I did it. And when I did it, he said, OK, well, you can come and work for me now. So I went to work for him as an apprentice for four and a half years and learned everything I could until I got the courage to open my own shop. So that I did here in September 2015. And then the Rabbit Hole, which is my children's shop, opened in April just this year. So that's quite new, that one. I think that reading is important on a lot of different levels. Just one being the fact that you relax when you've got a book in your hand and it takes you into another world and all those different worlds are in the, all the different books. And you don't know where it's taking you, but at the same time, you're away from your everyday life. You're doing something different that's taking your imagination away. I think that the stories that you read in books can stay with you, and years and years later, you can remember something. And actually, you learned from reading somebody's story. There's always a little gem, and they stay with you for your whole life. Can broaden your imagination it can you can create something yourself and create the characters and kind of get a bit more personal with characters and a different world than in reality i think reading helps embed certain skills within a person so you know a lot of people are researching their gcse english at the moment so if you read a lot you know you might be more inclined to do better in those exams um, lots of different skills that reading has been shown to benefit so it helps memory it helps concentration yeah, even things like old age, it helps to prevent dementia, that kind of thing. It's also it expands your general knowledge, lots of different things that people don't even realise that it does. Plus it's yeah, a bit of quiet time as well. 
The benefits of reading were further discovered by the University of Sussex during 2009, when a study was taken that proved reading is a great method of relaxation, far better than any other activity such as listening to music. They found out that reading can reduce stress by 68%. This is because your mind is invited into a literary world that is free from the stress that plagues your daily life. Getting into reading for fun can be a difficult task if it's not something you're used to. One of the best methods is to start by joining a book club, as it allows you to be in a social environment where you can discuss books with other people. Available at the college is a book club helps it out by Catherine Gray. Well, the book group was started about three years ago by some Access students. So we helped them set up the book group and then they left and we sort of took it on as staff. So that's how it sort of started at the college. The age range is anyone from 14 and upwards, so any age uh, range of staff and students can attend the book group. We don't have a particular genre, we tend to pick more contemporary fiction that you know, students will obviously find uh, interesting and appealing to them. Um, so it's just, yeah, we get a lot of free books from the reading agency who support us as well. So it's based on that really. You can pop in and see us, pick up the book from us, you can email us and we'll get the book to you. So, so many different ways you can get involved. You know, it just it helps to benefit everybody really, so we'd always like to see new members turn up. Joining a book club is only one method of getting into reading. There are many other tips available. I don't have a problem, say, with, with teenagers reading online or reading on different mediums. It doesn't have to be from a book, you know. Get them reading something that they're going to enjoy, whether it's a graphic novel, comics, anything like that at all. Get them interested in a subject or a topic and get them reading that first, and, and that's the breakthrough, I think, really. If you're at home, if there's a family with teenagers there as well, obviously it's not easy to do, but limiting maybe even just once a week, having a period where you say this is you know, a quiet time for reading or something like that, I think would help immensely. Libraries can do a lot, bookshops can do a lot, because I've certainly noticed that people who aren't natural readers think a bookshop's all very terribly highbrow and they don't want to go in there. So there's a lot we can do. Um, I've got a little camper van that I'm doing out as a mobile bookshop, and the intention is to go into schools with it when they have fair, fairs and fates and that sort of thing or go down to the beach with a load of beach books. But there's always a book for somebody. And I think that as booksellers or as libraries, it's up to us to actually get people to find the one that they want. Instead of just saying, you must read this, you help them to find a book that they would like to read. Maybe start off with something smaller, say a quick read book, which is designed for you know, younger people. It's a smaller read. Just to be encouraging, not to force reading. So just to be helpful, really. Just try it. Just pick up a book and try it instead of watching an episode of Stranger Things or something. Just try it. Books can be incredibly powerful. Even after reading a multitude of books, they still hold the power to shock you, to make you feel inspired. They allow you to escape reality and go on a journey, letting the rest of the world disappear for a while. Reading allows you to see the world through someone else's eyes. Books can leave you breathless, taking your adventures with twists and turns, keeping you on the very edge of your seat, right until you turn the very last page.